Mayanja. My name is uh, Shaka, Shaka Mayanja. Although some people call me Roots. Hmm? I call myself Roots. So Shaka Mayanja, those are my names. I'm a musician. Been doing music all my life. So that's me. Music defines me pretty much. Yes. Rastafari, the introduction of Rastafari in Uganda is a bit vague, but I have to say that as far as I know, Rastafari came here through reggae music. It was reggae, purely reggae music. Um, the first batch of Rastas that we know here were the Mugalu family members, members of the Mugalu family on Loom Street. And there was another one called Glory Horror. Those are the first people we knew even who had locks. Well, I'm talking about Rastafari, not having locks, two different issues. But those guys uh, on Loom Street, they were very much into reggae, especially the Whalers, Bob Marley and the Whalers. So they are the ones who really started Nakashero Market area, Loom Street. They had a shop there. That those family members, that's how Rastafari, through reggae, for me personally, it was around 1981. I think I was nine years old. It wasn't uh, when I was around nine years old in 81. There was a, a record at home. Somebody bought it, an LP vinyl album of Rastaman Vibration. And the first time I saw somebody, the locks it was Male on the cover, and then in the open inside there was uh, you know gra graphics of uh, you know of uh, Haile Selassie, His Imperial Majesty, and the whalers, you know, even the word Rastaman vibration, you know, those are words I never had, but you could read because these albums had the lyrics of the songs. So I, I sang that album word to word with my, bro my older brother. That's the first time I had anything to do with Roots or even Rastafari, you know. So th for me, that's where it started. But even then, I'd I did not meet anybody here in Kampala who was into that at all. So I didn't, uh, you know, after liking the music, that was it. Then, of course, Eddie Grant came around, you know, in the 80s. There were no, there were, we didn't have really TVs or whatever, or videos. So then late 80s, you could see the video of uh, How Do You Feel My Love and what, you know, Eddie Grant, he had locks. But I hadn't really seen Ugandans with locks or anything like that. Actually, that's not accurate. When I was growing up in the 70s, in, at school, I was an old man. That old man, we used to pass by him. He, you know, he was near a big, what we call the Mbuga, which is the Nagala where they crown the Kabaka. He used to sit there. And when we were kids, you know, passing through the bush, going to the school, you know, King's College, or I was in Budo Junior. He used to tell us, don't pass behind that guy. Ah, that guy is a witch, what? You know, those things they tell us, you know, Christian school. But I was fascinated by this guy. He had, you know, he, he had white locks and a white beard. So he used to sit there all day, you know, and we used to pass by him and people, you know, we were kids were scared. It is later in life when I started going to that hill, you know, to, to, you know, I've been meeting his son, who's now also an old guy, who told me that uh, at the time he refused to cut his hair, his locks and beard, until the, the kingdom of Buganda was restored, you know, the Kabaka. And he, did, he, he lived long enough to see the Kabaka return before the Kabaka was crowned, so he did not get a chance. But it is his family that actually does the crowning. But that's the first time I saw somebody with locks. But I didn't know what it was. Then, around 1989, I met friends with another guy called Kato. He had locks. And he was very deep into the Rastafari movement. He knew so much. He was talking about things that we didn't even know. And not just Rastafari. He was talking about ancient Kemet, Egypt. He was literally an Egyptologist, you know. He was a musician, but he knew. All, he used to read a lot of books. Kemet, uh, the Sumerians. He knew all these things, and we were thinking, what is this guy, you know? Because once we were from the Bible side of things, he was the other guy that I, you know, I started working with him musically. He's known. He has a, a famous song here that, you know, people sing, you know. He called Nyam. That guy, he's in, now in Norway. Shokato Ebo, that's his name. So he started telling me about you know, Rastafari. By then I was doing, uh, I started writing reggae music, you know, in around 88, because I come from hot, you know, hip hop, soul, R&B, funk, and we even had a band 
Port Sol crew and all that. But I deviated from that in 88 when I started delving into Rastafari. But that's the first time personally and I met any met face to face with somebody that's like 89 90 then I started hearing more you know about this there were no books there was no literature there was no internet so yeah I think the Mogalus in the 80s that's where it stems from but that came from Bob Mal and the whalers that's what I'm sure of well let me hear you say my